And the, the stream that we're seeing tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about two things again. So we're just going to review a little bit from last week. And then we're going to talk about Newton's third law bad, Newton's third law good. And then we're going to do a bunch of just applying Newton's third law. So we'll kind of see where we're at when we get done. So the very first thing that we've got to remember is all forces have two things, okay? Not three, not four. We're just going to think about two things. So we have the object, and the object is the thing that the force acts on. And then we have the agent, and that is the thing that is doing the pushing or the pulling or whatever it's doing to the object. So we have the object, and we have the agent. So if we think about those two things, and we think about Newton's third law, uh, we might have something like this. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So that's a terrible definition. If you remember, if you kind of watched what we talked about last week, we said uh, that's just not a very good definition at all. Because if I pull a child in a wagon, that wagon moves forward. And that's not equal and opposite, is it? Um, so if you really think about it, you could kind of even look at this kid down here that is pulling the other child. So we've got a couple of children. And I know that this child is pulling in this direction. And so the wagon pulls back. And the force of the pull by the boy uh, is going to be equal to the force of the pull by the wagon. Um, and so how does this thing move? That's, that's what I want to know. In order to do this, let's really think a little bit better about a better definition. So a better definition of this is if A exerts a force on B, then B exerts a force on A that is equal in strength and opposite in direction. So that's all we're going to say about it. I know that when this child is pulling in this direction, there is an equal and opposite. Oh, got to be careful. B exerts a force of A that is equal in strength and opposite in direction. So that's super important. Well, where do we use this? Well, we use this all the time, but I don't think we really realize that we use this. And there's some things that we think about, and they don't always work out really well. So then let's try this a little bit and see what happens. And so this is an interactive piece. What I'd like for you to do is go ahead and um, I'd like for you to answer A, B, or C for this question. And the question is, while I'm driving down the road, a grasshopper strikes the windshield of the bus that I'm driving and makes a really bad mess, uh, and I can't see. So which of the two forces is bigger, the force on the grasshopper or the force on the bus? So if you can answer that, you can either answer A, B, or C. And let's kind of see what you get. So, so far, we've got a couple of answers, uh, a couple of answers. So I've got two A's. I've got one C. Let's see if anybody else answers. I'm going to give you, there's another one, and there's a C. So I've got five seconds, four, three seconds, two seconds, one second. Excellent job. Okay, so I have three people answering C, and I have two people that are answering A. And the correct answer for this is C. They have the same force on both things. But you say, how is that? Because if you have a bus, so this is my really bad bus, and I have a bug, and that bug comes in and hits the windshield, isn't the windshield hitting harder on the bug? Because look what happens to the bug. It's kind of crazy. But it's not, because the force is the same. So let's say that the force is, uh, I don't know, let's just give it a good round number, 50 newtons. And um, let's say that the bus has a mass of 5,000 kilograms, and the bug has a mass of 0.5. Well, let's do 0.05 kilograms, okay? So the question is, what is the acceleration? What is the acceleration of the bus, and what is the acceleration of the bug? So to do that, we have to remember that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. And so the acceleration would be equal to the force on that object divided by its mass. So let's go ahead and let's figure this out. Let's see what this is. So if I take 5,000 and uh, I've got 50 newtons, the acceleration or the change in acceleration for the bus is gonna be 50 
divided by 5,000. So because I know you all love it when you get out your calculators, let's all get out our calculators and let's figure this out. So I'm going to take 50 and divide it by 5,000. So um, if you can do that, tell me what the acceleration or the slowing down of the bus is. So let's see if anybody can get this. So 50 divided by 5,000, what would you end up with? Very good. So I've got one person, I've got two people now that have an acceleration of 0.01 meters per second squared for the bus. Excellent. Now let's do the same thing. So that's for the bus. So we're going to put B. But now let's do the acceleration of the bug. So I'm going to put BG for bug. And it's equal to 50 divided by 0.05. So remember the force on each object is only 50 newtons, or only, I guess. Uh, depends on which thing you are. So we're going to take 50 and divide it by 0.05. Let's see what we get. So I'm going to take 50 and divide it by 0.05. Yep. And I already have one answer from somebody. So that answer is 1,000 meters per second squared. OK, so if gravity is 10, then that means that the bug experiences a g-force of 100. And a g-force is kind of something that we think about all the time. So the g-force is really just how the acceleration due to gravity compares to what you feel. So usually you feel 1g. So if I'm sitting in my chair like I am right now, I just feel 1g. If I'm in my car and uh, I go down into a valley, so let's say that I go down a hill, when I get to the bottom of the hill, I probably feel like maybe one and a half G's. If you're on a roller coaster, you might feel three times your weight at the bottom. This bug gets uh, kind of feels like that it is 100 times its mass. Okay, so it feels like I'm sorry, 100 times its weight. That's huge. Um, that's why the bug looks like this, and the bus really doesn't change at all. So the bus slows down by 0.01 meters per second squared. And the bug slows down by 1,000 meters per second squared. So that's why the, buzz, the bug ends up looking like it does. And that's kind of the problem with that bug. All right, let's go ahead and do this next one. So number two, many people are very familiar with the fact that when you shoot a rifle, uh, it recoils. That means it kind of it bounces back. So one of the things uh, that uh, if you watch anybody in the military, my brother's in the military, and whenever they shoot a gun, the bigger the caliber of the bullet, the larger the bullet, the more kickback it has. So that's called recoil. This recoil is really just an action-reaction force pair. So the gunpowder inside creates a lot of hot gases. They expand out and that allows the rifle to push forward on the bullet. And because of Newton's third law, we know that the bullet pushes back on the rifle. They want to know, not this time about the force, they want to know what is the acceleration of that recoiling rifle. Is it greater than the acceleration of the bullet? Is it smaller than the acceleration of the bullet? Or is it the same size? So I'll give you the just a, maybe about uh, 15 seconds to think about it and answer that. Go ahead and put in A, B, or C down in the bottom. So go ahead and in the comment section there, go ahead and put in A, B, or C. So is the acceleration of the recoiling rifle greater than the acceleration of the bullet, smaller than the acceleration of the bullet, or is it the same size? Remember that the rifle has a big mass, and the bullet has a very small mass. And you can kind of think about force is equal to MA. So I've got one person, and so far they have said B. It is smaller than the acceleration of the bullet. And that would be 100% correct. And it's because, remember, we're dealing with F equals MA. So the force is the same. So I'm just going to put force in the middle there. And on the right side of this, we're going to put rifle, so R-I-F-L-E. And on the left side, we're going to say F equals M-A. And we're going to use the bullet on the other side. So what's the difference between the bullet and the rifle if we think about F equals M-A? Uh, the bullet has a very small mass, so we're going to put a little in here. And the rifle has a very large mass, so we're going to put a very big M there. 
the rifle must not have much of an acceleration. So we can put a small a there, but the bullet, in order for the force to be the same, has to have a huge acceleration. So let's think about it this way. Let's say that uh, the mass of the rifle is 10 kilograms and the acceleration of the rifle is only 0.5 meters per second squared. The question is, what is the actual force then that we're dealing with? So here we would say that that force would be mass times acceleration and it would be five meters, I'm sorry, five newtons. On the other side, let's say that the mass of the bullet is only 0 0.001 kilograms. If that's true, let's figure out what the acceleration is. So remember, the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass. And so if you take 5 divided by, so here we go, 5 divided by 0 0.001, you get 5,000. So that would be the acceleration of the bullet. It would be 5,000 meters per second squared. All right, so now you see the big difference between the two. The bigger the bullet, if the force is the same, the more of that force or the uh, recoil that you will feel uh, in your shoulder from the rifle. So that's why uh, larger uh, guns with bigger ammunition tend to have more kickback. If you think about a cannon, cannon would have a huge kickback and a BB gun would have a very small one. So that's the difference between the two. Let's go ahead and move on to number three. So in the top picture that you see down here, we have uh, Kent move it. Kent move it. Uh, get it? Kent move it. Uh, okay. Anyway, is pulling. Yeah, I kind of thought it was maybe. Okay, it's not that funny. I guess uh, is pulling upon a rope that is attached to a wall. So here's the wall. Uh, in the bottom picture, Kent is pulling a rope that is attached to an elephant. In each case, the force scale. So here's our force scale. It is reading uh, 500 newtons. Is Kent pulling with more force when the rope is attached to the wall? Is he pulling with more force when the rope is attached to the elephant? Or is the force the same in each one of those cases? And we'll bring this down just a little bit so you can see it. Yep, so it looks like everybody so far is answering C. And now I think you have it. Because C is meaning that it is the same force in each case. It doesn't matter whether this is a wall or this is an elephant. We only have as much force as what Ken can pull with. So it is the same force in each case. When Ken pulls, he pulls in this direction. And so this little guy right here, which is our scale or our force uh, sensor, reads 500 newtons. So there is also a pull of 500 newtons here. And then there is a tension of 500 newtons here. So if he's pulling with 500, we get that all the way across. So 500 coming from him, 500 on this string, 500 also on this string. When we do the same thing with the elephant, uh, it doesn't really change anything. The elephant, the brick wall, they're both stationary, uh, and he is pulling, but he can't pull any harder. Well, the elephant can't pull back on him any harder than he can pull on the elephant. So that's kind of why you'll see what you do. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this is kind of an interesting picture because they want us to go through, and with Newton's third law, remember, we're always dealing with two things. And we said that those are the object and uh, the thing that is pulling on the object. So we call that an action-reaction pair. So an action-reaction pair. Let's go through and identify all the places where I have an action reaction pair. So where one thing is touching another one and it's trying to influence to move in one direction or the other. So one of the first ones that you'll see is the man is trying to pull on the monkey. Okay. So we could actually do this by thinking about, let's go ahead and put in a dot for the man. So we're going to put a dot right here. And here we go. So we're going to put a arrow there. So this is the force of tension, and it is on the man, and it's coming from, uh, instead of monkey, let's call this an ape. We'll just make it that way. So we're going to put ape. And then we've got a force going in this direction, and this is the force of tension on the ape from the man. 
and these two are exactly the same. So we're going to leave those as red. We're going to change colors here as we go through. So hopefully you can see these pretty well. Let's do the next one in green. So now we have a monkey, and that monkey is uh, getting pulled on by the scale here. And so we will put in another arrow, and we could say this is the force of tension on the monkey from the scale. Oh, I'm sorry, we said ape. So on the ape from the scale, and then this would be the force of tension on the scale from the ape. Then over on this side, we'll change colors again. Let's go to blue. Uh, I have a force in this direction and one in this direction. So this is the force of tension on the scale from the tree. And then this one is the force of tension on the tree from the scale. And those two are equal and opposite. Hopefully we won't run out of colors here. So let's do the next one and yeah, let's do purple. So now uh, it looks like I've got all the forces left and right almost, although there are some feet here with this guy. So we know that uh, there is a force going in this direction. Okay. So there's a force in this direction and there is a force in the opposite direction. So he's pulling and when he's pulling backwards towards him, okay, his feet are here on the ground. We don't want his feet going anywhere. So the question is, what is the force that is keeping his feet from sliding? What would we call that force? Yeah, so that one is definitely the force of friction. So is the force of friction here, is it going left or is it going right? So is the force of friction going left or right? He's trying to keep his feet from skidding. Good. So it is a force of friction going to the left. That force of friction, believe it or not, is equal to the force of the um, which thing. So that's what I want to know. So what is the opposite force for this one? So there's a force of friction going to the left. So there's a force of friction going to the left. Yeah. So it's the force of tension that you see up here. So we kind of think about this guy as one thing. We have a force of friction that's actually going left. So what commonly happens whenever we draw them this way instead of using dots, you got to think about the person as one big dot. So there is a force of friction, and it is going to the left. Okay. Um, are there any other forces here? Well, we know that there's a force straight down. And that force would be the force of gravity. So that's mg for the strongman. And then there's another force that's equal and opposite. So another action-reaction pair. And it is up. And that is the normal force acting on the guy. We probably also have a force down here of the roots acting on the tree, uh, holding the tree there as the tree's getting pulled. So you can really go pretty far with this if you want to. We won't. We're just going to keep going. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number five. So this is a really difficult question for a lot of people. Let's see if we can get this one. So this one says the pull on the wagon. So you'll notice that there is a force from the horse on the wagon, and it's pulling it to the right. And it's the same as the wagon pulling on the horse. So it's kind of weird because if you think about it, we do have the force of the uh, force on the wagon from the horse. And we have a force, oh, sorry, force on the horse from the wagon, and then a force on the wagon from the horse. And notice that those are equal and opposite. So if I said that we're looking at this right here, so there's our dot, this is the same dot here, we've got a force of pull, and that is on the wagon from the horse, and then we have a force of pull or a force of tension, however you want to do it, on the uh, on the horse, and that's coming from the wagon. So it's kind of interesting to see that. So let's go ahead and do this. Instead of looking at it that way, let's look at it as individual things. So let's go ahead and change back to red, and here we go. We've got two dots. So one of the dots is the wagon, and the other dot is going to be the horse. And let's think about all the forces that are happening here. So we do have 
a pull on the horse, okay? So there's a force of a pull or we have force of tension and that is on the horse and that's coming from the wagon. And then we have an equal and opposite force in this direction and that is the force of the pull on the wagon from the horse. Um, let's say that the horse and the wagon have the same mass. So we could say mg, and this would be the mass of the horse times gravity. And then this one over here is the mass of the wagon times gravity. So now we have the normal force, and this would be for the horse. And over here, we have a normal force, and that is on the wagon. So, so far, everything seems to be like up and down is equal, left and right is equal. Why in the world does this thing move? So we're ignoring one thing. What is the horse trying to do? Which way is the horse trying to go? That's the question. Which way is the horse trying to go? Yeah, the horse is trying to go to the right. Which way does the horse's hooves push on the ground? Which way does the horse's hooves push on the ground? Yeah. That's correct. So we know that there is a push. So we're going to draw this a little bit bigger. There is a force of a push, and that is on uh, from the horse on the ground. So there is a force of the push. Force of the push on the uh, force of the push on the ground from the horse. What is the equal and opposite thing that's going on then? What is the equal and opposite thing? So that would be, yeah, excellent. That would be friction. So this is the force, okay, uh, on the horse from the ground. And that is an equal push. So notice that this arrow and this arrow, they're both the same, but they are both longer than the force of the pull of the horse on the wagon and the force of the pull on the wagon from the horse. Now, is there any friction on the wagon if it's on wheels? Is there any friction going to the left? That's the question. You either do yes or no. So there might be a little bit of friction maybe in the, in the wheels. Uh, there's a little bit of static friction here, but that friction would be super small. So we're just going to put the force of friction on the wagon coming from the ground. Now let's go through and do this. We know that we could say that there is a sum of the forces in the x direction, and this doesn't have to be accelerating. It could be it could be moving at a constant velocity. So let's do that. Let's just say the sum of the forces in the x are zero. Okay, uh, if that's true, I know that I have a force of push on the horse from the ground minus a force of push on the ground from the horse. And that is uh, minus the force of the pull on the horse from the wagon. And we have also uh, plus the force, oops, force of push or pull on the horse from the wagon. Oops, on the wagon from the horse, sorry. On the wagon from the horse minus the force of friction, okay? And that would be equal to zero. So we want to know what is that really that force the pull on the, on the wagon from the horse. It's not very big. You'll know that. And you also see that the force of friction is really small. So because this frictional force, so we need to probably put FF here, that frictional force is so big on the horse from the ground, it's bigger than the force of friction going back. And because of that, the whole thing moves forward. So if the horse has way too much to pull, that horse can't push enough hard enough on the ground to overcome the force of friction between the ground and the wagon because of the weight that's on the inside. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and somebody said, yes, this force of friction is pretty much negligible. It's not very big. So overall, the sum of the forces uh, in the x direction are essentially zero. Okay. Um, we, if it's moving at a constant speed, if we wanted to accelerate, we could have made that in a cool. Let's move on to the next one. So I'm pushing a grocery cart uh, along a level floor in the presence of friction effects between the cart and the floor. So there's a little bit of friction here. 
Um, they want us to draw a free body diagram for me. So there, there are you or me for the cart and then for the floor slash earth. So for the floor slash earth. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, straight down for this one is the mass of you times gravity. And so straight up would have to be the normal force, okay, on you, and that is from the floor. Now, this is the mass of me times gravity, and that gravity is on me, and it's coming from the Earth. So we're going to do some things with some little letters here. I think that'll help a little bit, okay? Uh, I know that uh, going in the opposite direction here, notice that I am holding on, so there is a force going this way, and that would be the normal force on me from the cart. And then going to the right, okay, so going out to the right would be the force of static friction on me from the floor. So when I push back on the floor, I know that there is this friction force. So there's that friction force, and it's static because my feet are not sliding. Let's go ahead and think about the cart. So the cart doesn't have as much mg, so we'll make it small here. So this is the mass of the cart and times gravity on the cart from the earth. And now we're going to have a small arrow pointing up. This is the force of normal. And remember we said normal force is at a 90 degree angle. And that is the cart from, um, from the floor. We know that there is a force going this way, and we could call that the applied force, and that is on the cart from you. And then in this direction, there's an equal and opposite force. So this would be the force of friction, and that is from the cart, I mean, on the cart from the floor. Now, the last thing that's going on is we're gonna look at the floor earth. So there is a force pointing down, okay? This would be the normal force, the normal force on the floor from me, okay? So this is the floor. This is one that's kind of weird. So remember, this is the floor, and this one was the cart, and this one is me or you, however you want to look at it. There's also a force down on the floor, and that's the normal force on the uh, cart from, well, it's really on the floor, on the floor from the cart. Then pointing straight up, this would be the force of gravity on the earth from you. And then there is a force of gravity on the, on the uh, earth from the cart. So when we push on the earth, the earth pushes back on us. Um, when the earth pulls on us, we pull back on the earth. It's not noticeable to the earth, but it's very noticeable to us. Why? Because of the mass of the earth is huge, and our mass is very small comparatively. Uh, there is still, going to the left here, a force of friction on the earth, okay? And that is coming from you. And there is a force here of friction on the floor from the cart. So these are all of the forces and they wanna know what are Newton's third law pairs. So we can see all of those, uh, those pairs by doing the following. So let's go ahead and we're gonna grab blue here. And I know that I have a normal force on me from the cart. So the opposite force of that is the applied force on the cart from me. So notice that I always will use the same letters, YC, just opposite uh, in direction here, and that's CY, okay? So there is a force of friction, and it's static friction, on me from the floor, okay? So there is a force of static friction on me from the floor. Here, there is a force of friction on the cart from the floor, over here, there's a force of friction on the floor from the cart. So we've got this one. So I'm going to actually touch these together. We've got this one, and then we have this one. 
and these two are equal and opposite. So those are those third wall pairs. Okay. Uh, the next thing we have is we have the uh, mg on u from the earth. So that one's here. And this is the force of gravity on the earth by u. So those two things are equal and opposite. Here is the normal force on me from the floor. And then opposite of that, you'll see is this one. And so we can just keep going on here. So we've got one here. We've got another one here. Um, and uh, we just kind of keep looking at those. So here's another one. And you'll see all of those third law pairs, OK? And that's kind of how those third law pairs work. So even though there's three different dots, those things are all working on each other. So let's do number seven. So number seven here is we have a 35 kilogram child. It pulls a 12 kilogram wagon up a hill at 0.6 meters per second. Um, the wagon exerts a 60 Newton force on the child. So we've got several things that we need to do here. The thing that they want us to do first is draw a free body diagram for the situation. So we're going to do that free body diagram over on the left side. What is it that we have that is pointing straight down? So what force is pushing straight down here on the cart? So um, uh, we're going to do this for the wagon itself. Yeah, so that one is definitely mg. So this is the mass of the wagon times the gravity, times gravity, acceleration due to gravity. So we're really only looking at this Part of the diagram. We're not really worried about us in terms of the dot other than what we are doing to the dot. So remember we said two things in every single one of these and it's the uh, the object and then the agent. Uh, the object is our wagon, the agent would be the earth or me or the ramp. There's a lot of different agents here. So uh, I want to know what is it that is, so if my incline is like this, what is it that is pointing 90 degrees to the incline? So what is that? Which force is it? Yeah, very good. So that would be the normal force. So the normal force is pointing in this direction. We have one more force. What is the force that is pointing up in this direction? And I'm actually going to draw it right on here, um, even though it's just up a little bit. Yep. So this would be our fly applied force. So if this is kind of like a rope, so we're pulling the wagon and there's not a lot of stretch in it, but we could call this the force of tension or the applied force. You can do either one, totally up to you. Can I write anything else on my free body diagram? Should I write anything else on the free body diagram? And you're correct, Zach. No, I do not want to write anything else on the free body diagram. So let's come over here and let's do the free body diagram again. So I've got Fn. Uh, we know we've got, usually on the AP test, they will give you this incline. We have the force of tension going in this direction. And then straight down, we have Mg. So now at this point, I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add the angle. So we know the angle is 30 degrees here. And on this, I need to draw two more lines. What do we call those two lines? So somebody let me know, what are those two lines called that we need to draw? So there's two more lines we need to draw on here. Give you a hint, it does start with the letter C. Here's another hint, yeah, components, very good. So we're going to draw components on this. The other thing we're going to do is we see that the child is pulling the wagon up the hill. So on this diagram, not on this one, because that's our free body diagram, we want to get all three points that the College Board would give us. So going up the hill, we're going to say that that's positive parallel. And then we're going to say that in this direction is positive perpendicular. All right, awesome. Now that we have that, let's draw our components. Remember we said that if you have your fingers like this, if you want to move the angle, so we want to move the angle so it's touching the dot, you just rotate so your thumb is pointing down. If your thumb points down in the direction of mg, then you can see that other, you can see the first component, and that one is perpendicular, so now we want to make one that is parallel. So remember one more time, got my 30 degrees, it's right inside of my fingers here, and I'm just going to rotate it. 
So now this is MG. I don't want this to be MG. I want my thumb to be MG. I'm using my left hand. And then uh, my finger pointing down is going to be this line right here. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Where is the angle now? Is it down at the bottom or is that angle up at the top? What do you think? Yes, definitely the angle's got to be at the top. And that angle is 30 degrees. Cool. So is the side that is here, is that side mg times the sine or mg times the cosine of the angle? Is it mg times the sine or mg cosine? Very good. So right off the bat, somebody got that. I'm going to put mg actually on this side. And then over on this side, I'm going to put mg cosine of the angle. So if that's mg cosine of the angle, then the other one has got to be mg sine of the angle. And we know that that angle is 30 degrees. Cool. Um, so now that we're doing this, let's figure out what the force of, um, let's go through and let's just use our math here. Let's figure out what is the force of tension, okay? So the wagon exerts a 60 Newton force. So we know that's the force of tension. Let's just make sure that that comes out correctly. Let's make sure that comes out correctly. So let's do the sum of the forces now. Well, let's just say with this color, sum of the forces in the perpendicular direction. Is this thing accelerating? Yes or no? Is it accelerating in this direction? So in the perpendicular direction. Or I guess what would be the sum of the forces? So I'm seeing a lot of you say no. You know if it's not accelerating, the sum of the forces is zero. Because up is positive, we're going to say that the normal force here, first, minus, and then what do I want to subtract? Well, if I look, I'm going to use this line, anything below the line that is pointing in the perpendicular direction, not the parallel, but the perpendicular, is going to be what I subtract next. And so here, I have to subtract mg times the cosine of the angle, and that is equal to zero. The normal force then here is equal to mg times the cosine of the angle. So let's plug everything in. I have a, uh, remember we're doing this on the wagon. So I want 12 times 10. Then I'm going to multiply that times the cosine of 30. When I do that, I get uh, 12 times 10. Then when I multiply that times the cosine of 30, you should end up with 104 newtons. So that would be the normal force. The next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and find out if this kid really is pulling with a 60 newton force. Okay. So to do that, we're going to say that some of the forces in the parallel direction are also equal to zero. And that's because it's getting pulled up the hill at a constant velocity of 0.6 meters per second. So there's no acceleration there. The sum of those forces are equal to zero. So what is the force that I want to put first? What is the force that would be going? So if I think about here, let's put green on here. I want to think about anything to the right of this dotted line, but only the things that are parallel. So I don't want mg cosine the angle. So I do want ft. So this is going to be ft. And now I want anything to the left. So what is to the left of the green line, but it has to be parallel to the surface. Yeah, so this one is going to be minus mg times the sine of that angle. And that should be equal to zero. All right, so now we know the force of tension in that wagon should be equal to mg times the sine of the angle. So let's go ahead and put everything in now. So the first thing we need to put in is the mass. It's not the mass of the child. Remember, we're only pulling in the wagon. So that'd be 12 times 10 times the sine of, and remember, we're using 30 degrees here. So the sine of 30 degrees. When you solve for that, so let's actually do it. Here we go. 120 times 10 times, and then we'll do the sine of 30 we end up with 600. We end up with, uh, is that 600? Oh, you know what I did? 
I did 120. I actually end up with 60. Good. So that is 60 newtons. So remember, if something doesn't look right, just make sure you recalculate it if you have time. Because uh, remember, sometimes when you do these, you don't have a lot of time. So that is 60 newtons, and that matches exactly with what we have here. So that would be the uh, force of tension or the force that the wagon exerts on the child. So this is an equal and opposite force. The question again is, why is this thing moving up the hill if the wagon and the child are pulling equally on each other? Where is it that there is an unbalanced force? Where is it that there is an unbalanced force? What do you think? Yeah, so part of it's going to be the wheels on the wagon, and we know that there is very little force there, okay? So we could say that the force of friction is very small. Where is the force of friction very big? Where is the force of friction very big? And now we can think about, remember, we're looking at this whole system here. Yeah, so the force of friction is really big on the person's feet. So because this friction is really small and this friction is really big, this force of friction from the person's feet on the ground. So when the person pushes back, there's a huge force of friction going in this direction. So that's why we keep going up, okay? Now, if we're going up at a constant velocity, though, we know that the forces have to be balanced. So where's the other, other force? Well, remember, we have mg sine of the angle. So even though the force there is small, we also have plus mg sine of the angle. So if I add that, then I add this arrow and this arrow. So this is that mg sine of the angle. Those two forces are now equal. So our force from the friction on the wagon plus mg sine of the angle is equal to the force of friction between my feet and the ground. So just a little bit deeper understanding of kind of what's going on. I think that's why it's good to take a look at these. All right, last question. So the winning team in the tug-of-war contest is the team that puts more force on the rope. So the question is, is this a true statement? Uh, or is this a false statement? So is it the team that puts more force on the rope? Is it true or false? So somebody uh, let me know, do you think it's true or false? So I'm seeing uh, a few people here are saying that it is false, okay? So let's think a little bit about what's going on. How many things do we have here? Well, we've got a couple of people. Uh, they look like ninjas. They're dressed in black. And then we've got a couple of ninjas. They're dressed in white. So let's say that um, the two ninjas on this side, okay, we're going to call these guys really strong. And over here, we're going to call these guys uh, very weak, okay, comparatively. And let's say that these guys, when they pull, they can pull with a force of uh, equal to 300 newtons. So when they pull, they pull with a force of 300 newtons. If that's true, what is the maximum force the strong guys can pull with? What is the maximum force the strong guys can pull with? So if the weak guys can only pull with 300, what is the maximum force the strong guys can pull with in this direction? Yeah, it would also be 300 newtons. So here we have both of them have exactly the same. So when it says it's the team that puts more force on the rope, okay? Now, before we go any further, if you're pulling on the rope, you're putting force on that rope. Let's say, though, that these two guys are standing and they have a bunch of uh, marbles. So let's change color. So there are a bunch of marbles here. And the marbles reduce the friction between these ninjas that are super strong, okay, and the floor. And over on this side, these people are wearing really great shoes. And this is a sand paper surface. So it has a lot of friction. So here we've got just a little tiny bit of friction, and here we have a lot of friction. Uh, the question is, which way is the friction acting for our two guys 
on the right. Which way is friction acting for the guys on the right? Is it to the left or to the right? Ah, so now I've got a lot of different answers. When you push, are you pushing to pull the rope? Do I want to push to the left or do I want to push with my legs to the right? Think about what happens if you did that. So when I want the rope to move to the right, okay, which way do I have to push? So what you might do is you might even stand up, okay? Think about pulling. If I pull back, which way do my feet push? So do they push forwards or do they push towards me? So behind me. Do my feet push forwards or behind? So now I see it. Yeah, this would be forwards. So your feet are pushing in this direction. So this is the force of push, and you are doing that on the ground from your feet. So which way is the force of friction now? Which way is the force of friction for the white ninjas, for the white dress ninjas? Is it left or right? So the force of the push is to the left. Which way is the force of friction? Yeah, that force of friction has got to be to the right. And the force of friction here, let's say that it is 30 newtons. Okay, so it's not a lot. Well, yeah, let's make it uh, let's make it 300 newtons. That'll be better. So let's make it 300 newtons. Which way is the force of friction for the two ninjas dressed in black? Is it really big or is it really small? Is the force of friction really big or really small? Yes, it's small which direction would this force of friction be? So remember, they're still pushing. If they're pushing to the right, then that force of friction is going to be to the left. And let's just say that it is three newtons. What we want to do now is let's think about the sum of the forces in both directions. And let's see which way this whole thing is moving or accelerating. Uh, it's probably accelerating. So we're going to say the sum of the forces in the x direction and we're going to do it for the whole system, okay, uh, is equal to, and this would be the total mass of our system times acceleration. So let's come up with an equation and see what we get. The sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, I know I've got a force of friction, okay, and this is the big force of friction. I uh, then also have a force of tension over on this side, so we're going to put plus the force of tension, and then I'm going to subtract from that the force of tension going this way. So these two FTs we know are equal and opposite, okay? And so that would be 300 and 300, so this is minus FT. And then I'm going to subtract from that that little force of friction, and that's equal to the total mass times acceleration. So let's figure out what this acceleration is. Um, let's say that these guys each have a mass of 50 kilograms, and this guy is 50 kilograms, this guy is 50 kilograms, and this guy is 50 kilograms. So now we've got all of our masses. We said that the big force of friction is 300 newtons. The force of tension is plus 300 newtons but we have to subtract 300 newtons, so these go away, minus the force of friction, which is 3 newtons, and then we're going to divide that by the total mass. So we've got 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50, so 5 times 4, that would be 200 kilograms. And then that is equal to our acceleration. So what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and calculate what is the acceleration of these people to the right. What is the acceleration of these people to the right? So I'm going to do the same thing. And let's see what our acceleration is. And these would be actual, you could probably say that these are pretty much pretty good in numbers. Yeah, so I'm getting 1.5 meters per second squared also. So it's accelerating to the right at one and a half meters per second squared. Remember a meter is about, now I know it's kind of hard to see, but a meter isn't like this. It's actually a little bit further over, okay? So based on my screen, you can't really see. It's a little bit further over than that. So if you're moving and you're accelerating at one and a half meters per second, you know that they, these two 
people are going to just jerk the uh, the black clad uh, ninjas to the right. And it's because they're on Marvels. So that should make sense. All righty. Uh, anything else that you want to know about Newton's third law? We know that every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Nope, that's not right. The force on A is equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction to the force on B. So please make sure that you remember that. Um, anytime you have a situation where it seems like this makes it where things aren't going to move, it's actually something else going on that's going to make it move. You can do free body diagrams. So we did a lot of uh, just kind of review, I think, uh, for the most part for these.